Hey, this is a podcast. No, wait, it's a comedy podcast. Well, we tried to make it a comedy podcast and uh, it's not meant to offend anyone. So don't get offended, okay? And wait, there's something else. Oh yeah, yeah, listener discretion is advised. Audiomatic presents Our Last Week. Hi Kunal. Hi Paul. Are you back in Bombay? I'm back in Bombay. Yeah. Welcome. I mean, I don't know why I'm welcoming you. I'm in New York still. Yeah. But uh, welcome. That's strange, na? No? When you welcome someone and you are not there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome, welcome back. Arey, but you're somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. It's a. Now the thing I don't know. I I. Uh, travel quite a lot and huh. by now i should be quite used to world cities hmm. but when when you're in a city like new york you know it's it's very intimidating and i think it's the same way i'm intimidated by the himalayas if i'm hmm. surrounded by very tall buildings and things hmm. i get a little scared do you get a little scared i i don't know i i haven't re- i haven't been to new york in fact i've never been to america i hmm. I, i i i can safely say that the city with the tallest buildings i've been to would probably be hong kong or singapore yes uh and and would you say that one of the reasons you've kept your sanity hmm uh in some shape or form is because you haven't come to america i don't know i i've i've been very fascinated i do want to visit mm. it's just that now it'll take me about 6 years to get a visa yes and then another 6 to actually afford the trip there yes so i don't know I don't know but I I they've, am keen. They, they've reduced the wait times now for the American visa to a year. Oh it's come down to a year that's great. But I think the American consulate is encouraging you to get appointments in other countries. So it is one of those rare occasions where they're saying we are inefficient. Hmm. Please go to another country and get this done. So what hmm. they're basically saying is we have too many people in this country. Hmm. We cannot you know adhere to all these people you know there are millions of indians wanting to see daljeet dosanj dancing at coachella or whatever hmm. so you know there's, there's you there's got to be some other place go to norway go to brazil and apply for an american visa there saying stand in line this line is too long right right go right. to like you live near the american consulate so it's like oh i can just go here Like, but this line is so long that if you mm. stand at the end of this line, you're in Brazil. That's what he's mm-hmm. saying. Now the thing is that the the closest consulate to me, which is like mm. just three buildings away, mm. uh, is the Russian consulate. <laughs> you got to go. No, the thing is that I, as in, you know, then again, people are saying, is it the right time to go and all that? I think it is the perfect time, na? As in. Like, like the those monuments and structures don't change, right? Like they'll still stay the same. What Russia is doing is horrible, and all of that, and we know all these things, and that they might continue to do it. But that, but does it stop you from going to a country because of you know its horrible actions? Um, I mean, you know, at the height of Nazi Germany, hmm. people were traveling. I mean, Subhash Chandra Bose. Yeah. Um, is said to have met hitler he must have gone in the middle of in the middle of world war he must have taken a ship or a plane he must have reached yeah no my my thing is quite simple is that you know given that uh that you know say press freedom everyone is shouting about in india there's a lot of minorities rights are being sort of tampered with um there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that we may not sort of you know be down with so to speak and 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 so might many people in the world but does that mean that for an american or for someone from you know the uk or any any other place in the world will they say i'm not going to see the taj mahal because of this because yeah. you know press freedom i mean is i a- mean case in point this week tim cook from apple yeah you know like he could have opened the news and said oh my god they've just shot a gangster in the face on live tv yeah <laughs> i'm not going i'm yeah. not going to india but he didn't do that no. he changed three flights and he landed he switched on the news and it said gangster being shot in the face on tv yeah um 
didn't change his travel plans. Hmm, hmm. He must have, in fact, said this is a very good time to go. There's a gangster yeah. in UP who's just been shot in the face. One less gangster in India. Kural. Yes. Today we have some listener conundrums. Lovely. A new Patreon subscriber. His name is Sai Narayan. Hi Sai. Hi Sai. And his first conundrum is. Hello, Kunal Nanupab. I've been a listener for quite some years now. And finally, after a lot of inner conflict and contemplation, I decided to take the Patreon subscription for an ad-free experience. Thank you, Sai. But now I feel I'll miss the ad you both play in the middle of the show, which I think was the best part of the show. What do I do now? Sai, we'll, uh, uh, we've forgotten the ad, actually, that we did. Hmm. But just for the ad, Sai, should we, what should we do? How should we help Sai? Should we send him a... A uh, a uh, 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 ad? I I don't know how to help him out here. I I guess you could. I mean, we could send him just the ad that we recorded, which was "Hi, this is an ad." You know, that was the ad that we did. So yeah, welcome to so the ad break. Uh, welcome to the ad break, and then we. So I'm saying that that little bit we can send him. He can just listen to it in the middle of the podcast if he needs to. The interesting conundrum he raises is that sometimes, you know, mm. when you're watching like a show or you're watching television mm. or, you know, like now everybody's watching Netflix mm. uh, and you're not getting the ads, you know, I, I mm. and you're not getting like, are you a little bit disconnected from, you know, the products that are out there, the bad advertising that you, you end up laughing a little bit. It gives you a little bit of a breather. I'm not romanticizing it because, you know, I used to hate the ads in the middle of, of anything, of the movies, of, of TV shows. It was very irritating. But sometimes there would be ads that would get stuck in your head. You know, remember in the in the early 80s, we'd be watching our cartoons on DD and then the ads would play. Or we even, even when we hired a video cassette from a video cassette library, there'd be ads in the middle of the movie there also. You know, sometimes they'd have ticker ads at the bottom. I'll be honest, man, I need ads. Like, I go to the movies only yeah. to have Amitabh Bachchan shouting at me. I just feel like in the old days... Sometimes I got disappointed when the movie started hmm. because it was a large number of ads and a large number of trailers. Then eventually the movie started. I was like, ah, whatever. But it was that first part that gave me a lot of joy, you know, yeah. that uh, and even now I feel like, yeah, I want to know why Ranbir Kapoor is drinking Pepsi or whatever. I want to know these things, you know, like. Amir Khan is still doing ads, you know, at, at his tender age of 55, whatever, like, and clearly there's still demand. So I want to know all of these things. By the yeah. way, I'm really sorry, but there seems to be a giant fire engine yeah. going behind me. Can you hear it? It sounds like a fire engine has mated with a baby. And it's like a crying fire engine. It's a fire engine with an infant on it. <coughs> now, here's the thing I've realized about... New York is sometimes everybody's in a film. There may not actually be a fire. You know, he's make he just maybe just going for lunch or brunch or something. But he's just he's just putting that sound on to say I am a fire engine guy. Hmm. He probably looks like Bruce Willis. He's just going home. Hmm. But in New York, it's like that. You know, everybody makes a noise hmm. to establish who they are. I, Sorry I, to digress. No, no. I, I think that, you know, that, that raising a noise in the middle of the work that you're doing, you know, it's just you want to show everybody that you're working very hard and that, you know. I, I've I'm a, a policeman. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know, I think every job should come with the noise. Like a chartered accountant, like a very loud sort of <laughs> typing sound. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, your accountant is here. Yeah. Everything should come with the noise. Whether it's a dentist or a chartered accountant or someone who like, helps people invest in the stock market. They're always shouting, I find, you know, about their job and about, you know, how well they do it. it no, no, everyone, but I'm saying it, it's a it's a trend. And I think that what you're saying is that in New York is full of these kind of people that hmm. shout about their jobs and their lives. Is that so? Constantly, constantly, you know, like, like if you are, if you take the subway or the bus in New York, there's always someone shouting, like, this. Stand on there behind the yellow line. Stand behind the yellow line. I mean, it says there, stand behind the yellow line. And people will stand behind the yellow line. Now, the only difference between India and America is that in India, there'd be an abuse also with it. Hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Like, 
the person doing the job and is threatening you, it's more a question of you'll kill everyone. Hmm. Go stand behind that line because he's not showing off about his job. He's just saving a life and death situation. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like when that indigo lady is shouting, "Sir, you cannot board with that tiger." When we raise our voices, it's for slightly different reasons. Hmm. Hmm. It's when the customer is on the verge of destroying the world. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Don't you think? That's slightly different. It's little different. It's little different. So, Sai, we'll I guess we'll play you the the we'll do a special ad for you at some point. Yeah. Next month when Kunal and I are together, we'll do we'll do a thing for you. No, but I I just feel that you know. uh there was a certain charm to some of the ads that even that we saw in theaters you know like because they'd give you that kind of because they'd be so bad you know it would be an ad for some underwear or it's an ad for some you know and then everyone would laugh because it would be like the, uh, recently i saw an ad where this actress uh, starts sniffing this guy's underwear uh i think it was jacqueline fernandez and uh, she's reminiscing about the her man coming home from work and she opens this underwear drawer and she starts smelling it and she starts dancing with it you know and and the thing is that i so I was, and the whole audience had a wonderful time you know like everybody was really enjoying this ad even more than the film because the film was you know the film was getting uh, it was getting too much and, and and people needed that break and then suddenly you saw jacqueline do this with this <laughs> underwear and everyone was just like in splits and everyone was just like having a great time and i think that sometimes the ad does give you the relief you know that you need uh and sometimes I'm, of course i'm very sorry about that i don't know this ad but um clearly somebody thought this ad was good enough for family viewing yeah as it you know i i've seen worse for underwear ads where where you know there's mm. the, like where they really focus on the guy's crotch and they really like you know they, there's this seam running up his crotch and they really take a tight shot of i don't know it's always been difficult to do men's underwear ads you know because like no man is watching that ad and saying i got to buy this underwear i think they're targeting the women to buy the ad for the men or because i don't know I, i don't know how it works this is a this is a good conundrum so so if i bought that underwear i'd have to also be married to jacqueline fernandez who would also need to wait for me to come home from work right with your underwear um, in her arms yeah yeah I, a number of things would have to line up in order for me to get the real joy out of the underwear hmm i think the the fundamental problem might be jacqueline fernandez marrying me you know mm. apart mm. from everything else mm. and i think the sirens behind me agree you know they yeah. <laughs> they are, even the the driver of that fire engine is like yeah i can't get jackin fernandez to return my calls yeah. either yeah and for me the ad actually solves one of life's big conundrums is you know mm. is it where the hell are, are my underwears you know like i just <laughs> bought so many jackin fernandez <laughs> that's really it it's clearly with jackin fernandez who is dancing with them i think that his She's that is though. that that answers one of life's <laughs> big big conundrum why, why, why can't we do that other end of the ad where the guy goes is like what are you doing with the underwear why are you dancing with it i can't find my underwear anyway you're dancing with it <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the ad yeah. that they don't show you that's the ad they don't show you i i i shouldn't confess this but i will years hmm. ago i had done an ad kunal hmm. for it's an oil it's an oil that removes itching right right uh, i think it's an oil or a powder i'm not sure it's mm. a marwari company out of calcutta and mm. it's a uh, brand ambassador was akshay kumar mm. and the concept of the ad was that i'm dead i'm a mm. corpse mm. i am in a coffin yeah 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 akshay kumar is a priest and he's presiding over my dead uh, body services mm. my dead body but my itch is so strong hmm. that i come back to life and i start itching myself like i start hmm. scratching myself because hmm. uh it's the the my desire to itch is so strong and hmm. the father the padre who's hmm. doing the service stops the service to you know 
promote this oil or saying that even if you are dead if you continue to eat you need this to die mm. properly mm. and what had happened is that uh, akshay kumar shoots very early in the morning he's a very mm. dedicated actor he shoots quite early in the morning and it was about 5 in the morning and it was a really comfortable coffin mm. and when i got in that coffin and there was a pillow at the back Hmm. The on action, I'm supposed to itch and scratch and move around, hmm. and I fell off to sleep. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and so the intended shot of the camera yeah. above my head that's supposed to catch me, itch, the director started shouting, hmm. saying you're supposed to itch, hmm. but it was so comfortable that I felt no itch hmm. at hmm. all, hmm. you know. And I realized that. And at one point, Akshay Kumar turned to me and said, "Arey, if you don't itch, how will we sell the powder?" Hmm. Which is a great point. Hmm. You know, like I thought that. Imagine that ad, how that would have turned around. Hmm. Hmm. That says, you know, sometimes if you're getting a good sleep, you don't need itching powder. Hmm. <laughs> like how the ad would have to reverse if I didn't wake up at all. Yeah, you know, it have to become a different kind of ad. This is a problematic ad because I mean, if because the problem is that I'd rather not die, you know, and have mm. the itch keep me alive, you know. So then, if I use the powder and I stop itching, then I can die peacefully. But if I don't want to die, correct, and the itch is keeping and me alive, then I'd rather just itch, right? And also, this fundamentally presumes certain things about death. Hmm. You know that if your itch is so strong, <laughs> you can't die. So it's fundamentally also asking some questions about mortality, which I don't yeah, think are I, biologically yeah. true. Well, that 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 license I can still grant them. <laughs> that you're like yeah, there are certain things that you'll come back to life for. Yeah. If you're itching a lot, yeah, then you'll come back to life. Don't worry. Okay, we have another conundrum from Sai, our new Patreon subscriber, who lives in Gurgaon, and his conundrum is this: Kunal, house parties in Gurgaon are big, and recently he was invited by a friend to a house party on their terrace, and they had invited a ghazal singer, and the evening was with their intimate friends and family. The singer was great; ghazals ranged from Mehdi Hasan to Jagjit Singh, and everyone was enjoying sipping whiskey. All was fine. Till the gaz singer opened the evening to the audience for farmaish song request. Mm. Now the guest request ranged from Kishore Kumar to Kumar Sanu to Bika Singh, which of course was inappropriate for a gazal evening. The poor gazal singer, after entertaining a couple of requests, got a little upset and stopped taking requests, which led to guests getting a little upset with the gazal singer. To diffuse the tension, my friend's wife started playing loud Punjabi songs. Everyone started dancing and singing. I also saw an uncle pull the ghazal singer to dance to Mika's tune. Sorry for the long story, but my conundrum is: Should singers avoid farmaish from the audience in such gatherings completely, because it has the potential to snowball into something else? Yeah, absolutely correct. Absolutely, I have never seen a request evening go well for Western music, Eastern music, any music. Yeah. No, I I've also been to one of these intimate sort of home uh, where they invite a, a a singer to the house and you know someone of repute, not not just like, like you know uh, someone who who's known to do a certain particular form of singing, and uh, I think there they handled it well where you know they ended the evening and then everyone had dinner and and that was the end of it. But but I could I mean you have stories of of performing at you know uh, large family events uh, as well where they might they like after your stand up like if they had started saying can you do some Johnny Lever or can you you know do a uh, can you do some improv now or can you crack some jokes with our daughter. uh it would get into some <laughs> tricky uh, territory i i think that the art of the request hmm. is something as a people we're not very good at like one thing that at corporates you get a lot is make fun of vipul make fun of vipul and or they are like you know sales team eastern region tell say something about them now you don't have the context of why right. that's funny right you know that is the biggest they got you know like Mota Mama, where are the jokes about Mota Mama? Now, if you're in a wedding, you don't have the context for Mota Mama, yeah, so might yeah. as well then just let Mota Mama do the thing, you know? Or they sit yeah. you down earlier and lay out the entire groundwork for 
all the complications within the family or the company you know that that eastern sales is the loser team that's why you make fun of them so you're like acha acha okay now i get it so if they don't mm. give you that they're just throwing out things and yeah. i don't think we have a context or respect for a singer's back catalog hmm. so they don't give a shit if he's a ghazal singer they're like baja baja yeah. you know and the thing is that guy may not be a badsha guy yeah you know like you may just be a little sort of you know uh, i mean offending him but i don't think people care because what i like about indian audiences they come with what they know they don't yeah. give a shit or care about what the artist may or may not know yeah you know that makes it a little tricky territory what do you think yeah i i think that you know there should be certain boundaries uh, uh, so uh, like i can get it that at a wedding sangeet you've hired a singer and that singer is say you know he's just open to singing whatever he just wants people to have a good time he's just going to belt out anything you know i i get that but if you have someone <laughs> doing a certain genre like a certain specific yeah. like say it's an elvis yeah. presley evening and you have an elvis presley yeah. impersonator who's coming to do elvis presley and then suddenly you said you know uh where's yo yo where's yo yo and all that stuff like do some yo yo yeah. yeah so uh, yeah it, you know so then it gets complicated I, imagine going for a play you know or you go you're going to watch a show you know whatever 12th night or whatever it is or or as you like it and then suddenly someone from the audience says you know <laughs> like <laughs> do some stand up also do some stand up also like, <laughs> yeah. but i'm i'm you know i'm in the middle of a soliloquy here like this is like this is not the so so it i i guess i've i've realized also that don't you feel this way that after indians have a drink yeah yeah then they they've decided they they want something you know they they yeah. forget they forget what kind of evening that it is or you know like who's invited me they want a certain kind of thing yeah so they don't give they'll shout out whatever gappar se yeah. gappar se like they want that now that's what's it. basically it's the first you know people say don't say the first thing that's in your head yeah in one of these ghazal nights after a few whiskies if it's a nice roof and people are chilling yeah. they just shout out the first thing that's in their head yeah yeah you know like sunny leoli they'll just shout it out like you're like okay uncle this is This is you in your downtime. Like not, yeah. this may not be the right place for it. You know. Yeah. I had a friend who actually did a, uh, you know, one of those uh, supper theater things at one of these. Mm. It mm. was a corporate supper supper theater, and they did a they, they did a two person play. Devika Shahane, uh, 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 a wonderful actress, and she had done this thing, and I remember her telling me that. Uh, there was this one guy who had a few drinks and he was in the front row somewhere and they had finished their their play it was an actual play you know it was a two person play and at mm. the end of the play everyone clapped and everyone was happy and all of that but this guy kept shouting one more something else one more something <laughs> else so he said <laughs> he wanted it he wanted the show to go on but he wanted something else also not this one <laughs> yeah. more something else something else i once gone to i once got to see uh, the comedian kunal khamra perform in a bar he wasn't yeah. famous there it was many years ago and one uncle was wasted and while kunal was doing the thing he kept shouting to the back change the topic change the topic <laughs> So he liked the comedy, he just didn't like the topic. Topic, the topic was the problem. <laughs> Change the topic. Yeah. I'm saying the guzzle singer. You got no context. You are wasted. You just want to hear a song in your head. Yeah. You know, you'll shout that out. Yeah. You know, you'll shout out Brian Adams. Yeah. Everything I do, I do it for you. He's like, I don't. But I'm a guzzle singer. Like, there's no call. The guy will just still shout, shout out his shit. You know. Yeah. But there's one thing that I have to say, is that mm -hmm. is that. to become a ghazal singer you know to because mm -hmm. ghazals generally are based on a lot of sadness that's what i found there's a lot of they mm -hmm. they they're generally very they're very sad songs they they you know they they nostalgic or they reminiscing or they you know philosophizing but there's a certain sadness in it and i think that it comes from going to live events and having people 
force you to sing other stuff so so it actually does improve <laughs> you as a gazal singer in case you need to get into the zone of you know not being able to do what you want to do because it in, it improves your gazals because you're suddenly a much sadder person by the end of it because you've experienced these drunk people you've they are destroyed no yeah. that's why your songs are like koi kuch sunta nahi hai main gana gata exactly <laughs> then you invent gazals about it's autobiographical about yeah. the shit you're about the shit that you have to that, that people put you through you know teen ghar pe jhagda karke aa raha hu yeah <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's that kind of nonsense kura yes we have a conundrum for a lady called rashi hi rashi and hi rashi and she says to us i have a friend's birthday coming up yesterday i went to the store to get a nice dress for her i did buy a very pretty dress and as i was gift wrapping it suddenly i had the urge to try it on i couldn't stop myself from trying on the dress it looks so good on me Now I'm actually planning to keep it for myself and in fact wear it to the birthday party but I also don't have time and motivation to get anything else for her what should I do Excellent conundrum excellent I've always found if I see a really nice present I don't want to give it to someone Yeah Yesterday I I, I, I there was a scarf that I had for a friend hmm which I really liked hmm and i wanted to keep it and then i thought to myself this is a scarf that someone had given a friend had given for me to give to another friend here in the mm, us mm. and i realized that this is a really nice scarf and then i did spend a large part of day before yesterday figuring out if i can get a shittier scarf and keep this mm, one mm, and mm. give that other guy a shittier scarf mm. but then i realized that he'll find out what if he called the original friend and said yeah. you know but what would he say is he won't know that it's a shittier scarf shittier compared to what you know like a lot of this is speculative well you know then there's always that awkward thing of you know oh i'm wearing your scarf look i've sent you a photo and then he says but this is not the scarf that i sent you mm. that, i mean all mm. of this is possible they go out together and say i'm wearing look at me i'm wearing your scarf and he's like what scarf this is not that one then it all i mean it'll, it'll come back to you it'll come right? back I It'll think in back. this case it's much cleaner, you know. Like this is just like cleaner. gone there. I'm buying this gift, and now it's not a gift, you know. And it's all in Rashi's head, if you think about it's it. It's all in Rashi's it head. It was a it's present in her head, and now it's not a present. But but what I like is that Rashi is making a very important critical decision, which is keep the nice things for yourself. You know, and 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 a lot of times people say it's the thought that's important. It's not the <laughs> gift. <laughs> You yeah. Know? Yeah. So <laughs> and no but no one is saying that it has to be a pleasant thought. Yeah. You know the thought doesn't have to be in support of the friend that you're getting a present for. It doesn't. I got very lucky with a present. Very mm-hmm. lucky. I have mm-hmm. a friend who's got a 5 and 1/2 year old daughter. Mm-hmm. And I bought a um a reusable, you know I drink a lot of espresso. So I bought yeah. a reusable espresso cup. for a 5 year old girl no no so here's the thing so <laughs> i bought that and along with that i got a present i don't know why they sent me this but i got a present of like a toy turtle nice right so now i have a free toy turtle and i remember i was racking my brain what do i give this child whatever i was like shit i got that toy turtle from the espresso thing it cost me nothing Yeah. But now when I took it to my friend, I had to make up a story about the value of the turtle. So I yeah. said, you know, I searched a lot, this is a special turtle from Norway, this that. So then I made up a whole story about the turtle. I also must tell you this is the last time we're recording an episode of this podcast because this friend listens to the podcast hmm. and will find out that I've just done this 3 days ago. Right. Um but then I made a back story up and then the kid loved the back story. Hmm. and i said that you know, so that's what is more relevant the story and obviously is it good to lie to a 5 year old child no but the child doesn't know it's a lie the child just knows the story you know and that's what i find is that is that the story of the gift is much nicer than the gift itself 
that that if gifts come with a story you know that oh you know i was going there and then suddenly mm. i spotted this and i said no i have to and i took the bus back and i went back and i got it and they said shit it's just out of stock but it's it you know so if you build a story and then that you know then the, or, or some some effort some struggle and i think that as you know as people say it's the thought it's the effort that's important what she has done is put in the effort the effort is not lacking went to the store picked a dress all good intention it didn't work out but the effort you know the time that you spent <laughs> yeah. the time that you yeah. spent looking that is that yeah. speaks that speaks <laughs> that right that's the story yeah and, so and morally you your go, conscience is clear yeah and you can go empty handed also but you don't have to lie you, you can say that you know we they their collection was just not up to the thing we'll have to go together and and you know i really want to get you something and i feel that you know if we go back together we'll find something that's perfect because you know i i was a little bit this thing about your side you can still make a story and you can still be telling it the truth that it wasn't worthy you of there. you you know it wasn't worthy i of went you. there but this these gifts they're not worthy of you you know no. that, that that's such a beautiful line to say to someone yeah it was just not your style <laughs> it's not your thing you know then yeah. see they know my thing what a good friend they know my yeah. thing yeah good night last conundrum it's hmm. from rahul hmm. um and he says i was traveling by rickshaw the other day and the rickshaw driver and i were griping about the sorry state of affairs to each other and in a moment of unimpeachable wisdom beautiful words he said to me बम्बई की हालत इतनी खराब हो गई हो गई है कि यहां पर कुत्ता साइकिल पे पीछे भी नहीं भागता है बिकॉज ऑफ द सड़क कोट दैट स्टक विद मी बिकॉज द डॉग आल्सो नोस द रोड इज इन सच अ बैड स्टेट देयर इज नो पॉइंट रनिंग बिहाइंड एन ऑटो माय क्वेश्चन टू यू इज हाउ आर ऑल रिक्शा टैक्सी ड्राइवर्स सच वाइज पीपल इट्स एन एक्सीलेंट क्वेश्चन एक्सीलेंट या आई थिंक वेदर इट्स रिक्शा ड्राइवर्स और taxi drivers but not ola drivers not ola uber because they are just i mean you know they they're on their own phone they're talking on the phone and they're watching another phone so it's a very different sort of experience that they have in a taxi as opposed to a kali pili taxi driver who's more interacting with the world and with the customer and you know they speak to them and they you know they don't have these corporate norms of you know don't speak to the customer don't intrude on the person's life don't ask them how they're doing just you know drop them and just check, make sure that they're comfortable so when you don't have these corporate sort of and and i and i have to say that i i appreciate that sometimes but sometimes you want to be chatty you know you want to say are kya halat ho gaya hai you know so these guys whether they're rickshaw driver or taxi driver they they great against the city right i mean they are being grated against the city they are literally being torn to shreds mm. by the city so they have this this deep insight about what's happening they have inside information they they're listening to people who are having conversations in the thing making their own analysis they're politically aware i mean they might still be you know bigoted or horrible or whatever that's a separate issue but they have strong opinions that they love to discuss and i think that that is uh, that is the case in most places in the world with real i'm not i, mean, I don't mean i mean taxi drivers who you know belong to the unions and 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 drive normal taxis or rickshaws in this case that's a very good point so the other thing i found about ola uber drivers is they're not from the city they drive in yeah so generally yeah, yeah if sure. if i tell an uber driver take me to gateway of india which i would imagine or vt station which i would imagine are fairly central bombay landmarks they'll have to enter a lot of times they won't yeah. they won't know what it is right yeah. um whereas you know the, the what i like about auto drivers is they're off the earth you know so <clears throat> i had an auto driver explain to me the meaninglessness of digital payments hmm. you know he's like कुछ यू नो यू कान कुछ छू नहीं सकता है सर पैसा का क्या मतलब होता है अगर कुछ छू ही नहीं सकता है एंड आई थॉट दैट वाज क्वाइट प्रोफाउंड विद अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ मनी यू नो दैट लाइक व्हाट इज एन एसेट इफ यू कान टच इट ही सेड आजकल तो सब फोन पे ही चलता है क्या अभी सब सब हवा में चल रहा है एंड इज एसेंशियली एक्सप्लेनिंग यू नो द द द बिगिनिंग्स ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग एंड द द मॉरल डिलेमास ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग नाउ ही हैज विजडम आई मीन ही सीन द वर्ल्ड He also once I I live in Bandra, so I take a lot of autos because that's the system there. And a lot of times the guy will say, you know, 
बैंड्रा में सर 120 बिल्डिंग बन रहा है ये प्राइस पे कौन खरीदेगा यहाँ पर ये लोग पागल है क्या यू नो सो ये एज अ व्यू ऑन द रियल एस्टेट मार्केट ये एज अ व्यू ऑन क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग ये एज अ व्यू द स्टेट ऑफ द म्यूनिसपैलिटी ऑफ एन विल ड्राइव पास समथिंग एंड ही बी लाइक ये देखो ये लोग जो खोद रहे हैं ना ये अभी खोद के छोड़ के चले जाएंगे फिर कौन पूछेगा कि कौन सा कॉन्ट्रैक्टर ये किया है इट्स ब्रिलियंट ही इज आस्किंग अबाउट द नेचर ऑफ सिविक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रीडेवलपमेंट हु इज अकाउंटेबल आई मीन दिस गाय शुड बी इन द म्यूनिसपैलिटी ही शुड बी इन क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग एवरी टाइम आई टेक एन ऑटो आई फील लाइक द गाइज इन द रॉन्ग जॉब you know like he is the wise philosopher of our times yeah no truly and i i mean i like having conversations with uh, with taxi drivers i uh, sometimes i mean sometimes you hear a, a very interesting insights about you know where they live or uh, or what they just went through in the last couple of days or you know what they just saw it's it's very interesting so i i would say yeah they are the you know they they are the philosophers of the cities you know they philosophers are philosophers of our time and yeah <coughs> well you know at a very base kind of level at a base level but also one last thing i'd like to say is that basically when they're rejecting you when an auto driver says nahi jana hai don't take it personally because he's not saying he's not turning it down to be cruel to make yeah. more money he's saying yeah. you're not worth the conversation hmm. you know that's what he's really saying you're not worth Engaging in the conversation, I want to have about the state of the world. You are not yeah. wise enough. Yeah, it's like Plato not taking on a pupil. You know, right, right. Like right. for a long time, I think Socrates had to uh, beg Plato to take him as a student or something. That's Aristotle, one of these guys. Right. Because like you're not ready, you're not bright enough. You know, you can't be my tutor. It's like that. Nee jana hai, andheri jana hai, nee jana hai, because he can see that you're not worth his wisdom. Hmm. Hmm. So to answer to answer his question, I think that uh, you know they are the wisest people in Bombay, according yeah. to me. They should start a taxi service called Aristotle's. <laughs> Bandra to Jew, Aristotle service. <laughs> yeah. This has been our last week, but unlike Gazal singers, Kunal, we take requests. We do. So if you have any. for maish please send it our way and uh, we look forward to uh, coming to you with uh, new episodes uh, and uh, having new subscribers join on patreon so do spread the word and do um, like let more people do know things. about do, do things do things yeah, exactly yeah. just like sai joined us you know and what's an ad from us if you want personal favors um which do not involve underwear we are here we're here we're here our last week at audiomatic.in and also patreon.com forward slash our last week yes bye bye you were listening to our last week produced by rajesh tahil and avdut khanulkar hosted by anubhav pal and kunal roy kapoor Assistant Producer Akanksha Kadam <laughs>